EC motors. Personally, I am not much into motors or even mechanical movement. However, there is one motor which does interest me very much indeed and that is a small DC motor which has been rewound and as a result, when it is connected across an old discharged lead acid battery in very poor condition, it not only runs powered by the battery, which is supposedly impossible but the actually recharges the battery at the same time. Now, that motor does definitely interest me as it is acting as a battery self-charger, which is very difficult to achieve with electronic circuitry. Commercially available DC motors are deliberately designed and manufactured to have extremely poor performance. In my opinion, the reason for this is that a properly designed electric motor could easily do away with the need for using internal combustion engines in vehicles and that would not suit the oil companies or their owners, the New World Order Cardinals. Worse still, electric motors with COP1 open the way to self-powered free energy systems and that would never do. Dr. Peter Lindemann's video is available on the web and I strongly recommend that you watch all of it. It presents the basic facts very nicely. In brief outline, present day motors act both as a motor and as a generator of electrical power. But they are deliberately wound so that the power generation is used to oppose the input power and so produce a completely crippled output. During World War II, a German engineer rewired a standard electric motor and made it self-powered, that is. It ran and produced mechanical output power without the need for any input power once it had been started. That shows the potential of a properly constructed electric motor with the same size and general structure of any commercial electric motor. Presumably, he did that by adding extra brushes and using some of the windings in generator mode with their output powering the drive windings which were arranged asymmetrically. There was also one other man who achieved self-powered rewiring of a motor, but neither of those men made their information public knowledge. The con job which has been run on us for many decades now is to wind the motor in such as way that the magnetic fields inside the motor oppose each other. When a current is passed through a coil of wire, it stores energy in that coil, and when the current flow is cut off, that energy needs to flow back out of the coil and it will do so in the reverse direction. This is sometimes called back EMF, electromotive force, although many people are not happy with that description. However, no matter what you call it, there is energy stored in the coil and that energy can be used to do useful work. But, the motor manufacturers choose to wind the motor so that instead of extracting that useful power, they use it to oppose a major part of the input power. Creating a weak motor which heats up due to the wasted energy. Contributor UF Politics points out that a deliberate misdesign of electric motors has, for the last 130 years, been presented to us as the only way to make and operate such motors. He states that because the windings are arranged in a symmetrical way, that a braking effect is produced which reduces the output power of the motor by anything from 50% to 90%. That is, a properly wound motor would have anything from twice to 10 times the output power for the same input power. This misdesign guarantees that present day motors are always less than 100% efficient and always heat up when run. This misdesign is caused by using symmetrical windings in the motor. Standard motor wiring is quite different and the killer effect is caused by having two windings which face each other, powered simultaneously with currents flowing in opposite directions. This causes a complete conflict between the magnetic fields and that destroys the efficiency of the motor. A very experienced experimenter has started a forum thread on the energetic forum. Both to explain this and to show new and more advanced construction methods and to answer questions and encourage replications and further developments. The forum is at http colon slash slash www.energeticforum.com slash renewable energy slash 11885 hyphen my hyphen asymmetric hyphen electrodynamic hyphen machines dot html and is definitely worth visiting especially if you are good with mechanical devices. The experimenter uses the forum ID of UF Politics and he has produced an animated video in an attempt to explain the basic problems with present-day DC. 
electric motors, he points out that a problem winding in the standard DC motor looks like this. The input current for any winding is fed in through a single pair of brush contacts. The generated electrical power EC is not extracted and is forced to oppose the input energy EA, leaving only a fraction of the input power to actually run the motor. It is likely that a motor of this type will only operate at 25% of its potential efficiency. UF Politics has produced and demonstrated a simple way of overcoming this problem while using the existing motor housing, magnets and brush contacts. He does this by extracting the generated electrical power as a useful output and so preventing that useful power being used against the motor's operation. To implement this, he adds one additional pair of brushes and rewinds the motor coils like this. Here, one pair of brushes is at the top and one pair at the bottom of the armature, the bit that rotates inside the motor housing and provides the mechanical power output. The coils are rewound to form a series of separate vertical coils, connecting to one brush terminal at the top and one brush terminal at the bottom as shown above. The input power is between the terminals on the left and flows through the coil shown in brown. The current flow generates a magnetic field, causing rotation because of the permanent magnets marked N, for a magnet which has its north pole facing the coils, and S, for a magnet which has its south pole facing the coils. The black zigzag line represents the resistance to current flow of the wire and brush contacts. The coil shown in green on the right represents that same coil at a later moment when it has been disconnected from the power supply and rotated until it reaches that position, at which point the energy stored in it is taken off as a useful output by the right-hand pair of brushes. However, this is just an explanatory diagram and it does not show the very important fact that the discharging coil must not directly face a driving coil, because if it does, then the energy discharge would create a magnetic field which would interfere with the magnetic field of the driving coil and create a major problem. Right, to say that again, any one coil is powered on the left-hand side to drive the armature around and provide the output shaft with turning power, torque. Then that rotation disconnects that coil from the input power, leaving the coil charged with energy which has nowhere to go. That charged coil continues round until it hits the second set of brushes, which allow it to discharge through a load and do useful work. The really clever part of the adaption of the motor is best seen from above the vertical rotor. If, for example, you were to take a 5-pole DC motor apart and remove the windings, the shaft and armature body might look like this. When making an asymmetrical wound rotor, the windings go like this. The start of the wire is secured at the top and then fed downwards through the opening A and back up through the opening B. For the small radio shack motor, this winding would be 25 turns of number 30 AWG wire, described as radio shack red wire, with a copper wire diameter of 0.255 mm. If you are rewinding a motor armature, please understand that each wire turn needs to be pulled tight in order to make a tight. Solid and robust coil which will not vibrate unduly when the armature is spinning. The end of the wire mark finish is not cut, but is taken down through opening A and this time, up through opening C. For clarity, these continuing turns are shown in a different color, but please realize that it is the same single strand of wire being used throughout. The final wire turn goes down through opening A and finishes at the other end of the body of the armature. In these views, the wire runs down into the paper, each turn forming a cylinder. This view may give you a better visual picture of what the coils are wound on. The next step is to connect the start and finish wire ends of this V-shaped double coil to the commutator slip rings which allow current to be passed through the coil at just the right moment. 
seen again from one end of the armature. The connections are like this. The commutator slip rings are connected further up on the drive shaft and the start of the winding wire, shown previously in dark green, is connected to the top commutator sector in the position. Shown here. The finishing end of the wire is connected to the corresponding commutator sector at the far end of the shaft that is. The sector directly in line with the upper sector just connected to the start of the wire. This completes the first of five identical V-shaped coils. The next coil is wound in the same way. The armature is rotated one sector counterclockwise so that sector D replaces A at the top and the next coil is wound with the wire starting at the top and going down through opening D and up. Through opening E, repeating the same number of turns, and then, without cutting the wire the next set of wires are wound going down through opening D and back up through opening F. The start of the wire is then connected to the commutator sector which spans between openings A and E and the end connected to the corresponding commutator sector at the other end of the shaft. For each of the remaining three windings, the shaft is rotated one position counterclockwise and the same winding and connecting procedure carried out. When completed, no matter which opening is placed at the top of the view along the shaft, the windings and commutator sector for the wire connections will be identical. Three pole motors. The winding arrangement is slightly different for motors which have three poles, or multiples of three poles such as six, nine, twelve, etc. poles. For the very simple three pole motors, the armature looks like this. And with this style of armature, the winds are around the three arms, like this. And as before, the commutator sectors at the top are duplicated at the bottom, allowing separate input and output circuits for each of the three coils. The windings have many turns, filling the available space and each winding is connected to the slip ring sector directly opposite it, like this. The start of each winding is connected to the commutator slip ring sector at the top of the armature and the finish is connected to the slip ring sector directly below it, that is. The sector which is at the same angle as the top one where the start of the wire is connected. This allows the brushes which press against the slip ring sectors to connect to both ends of each coil in turn as the armature rotates. Three pole motors are particularly powerful and motors with six poles can be rewound with pairs of adjacent sectors amalgamated to give three larger sectors. Nine pole motors can have three adjacent sectors wound as a single coil to provide the same effect as a three pole motor and 12 pole motors can have four adjacent sectors wound as a single coil. The positioning of the brushes is important. With the three pole and five pole arrangements, the brushes are aligned with the gaps between the magnets which surround the armature. However, the rewound motor can be tuned for improved torque and reduced drive current by adapting the motor housing to allow some adjustment of the position of the brush and commutator slip rings relative. To the coils. This adjustment need only be slight as the angular movement of the brushes will be small. It is, of course, essential that the upper and lower adjusted positions move by exactly the same angular amount so that every upper commutator slip ring sector remains exactly above its corresponding lower slip ring. Sector. In other words, the commutator slip ring sector at the top and bottom of each coil must be exactly aligned vertically so that the electrical connections are made and broken at exactly the same instant the commutator and brush arrangement are shown here in UF politics diagrams. The commutator brush mark G, for generator, takes away the energy stored in each coil and passes it to an electrical load. The commutator brush mark M, for motor, feeds energy into the coil from the battery which is driving the motor. The red and blue stripes surrounding the armature are two permanent magnets. The magnet shown in red has its south pole facing the armature and the magnet shown in blue has its north pole facing the armature. This creates a magnetic field flowing horizontally across the armature. The five pole arrangement is like this. Here, 
The designation R slash S stands for Radio Shack, which is a chain of stores in America. In the forum, that is sometimes changed to ours and should not be confused with the large electronics outlet Radio Spares whose trademark is ours. UF Politics has suggested that the cheap 5-pole DC motor available from Radio Shack should be used by experimenters to become familiar with rewinding DC motor coils. Being a cheap product, those motors do not have a particularly high build quality, but they are suitable motors for experiments. Forum members share the details of how they dealt with adapting these and other motors. I have to admit that motor windings and operation tend to confuse me and I sometimes find it difficult to understand what UF Politics means when he talks about different winding strategies. However, it seems reasonably clear at this early stage of forum development that his objective is to produce two things. One, a very powerful electric motor which can be used in serious forms of road transport as well as for other practical applications, and two, a powerful motor generator combination which can produce useful generated electrical power. While UF Politics is very patiently going through many of the possible variations on how a DC motor can be wound and connected, and showing various forum members where they have failed to get some of their windings positioned correctly. He has also shown some of the best ways of connecting a rewound motor used as a driver or prime mover as some people like to call it. And a rewound motor which is to be used as an electrical generator. He shows two important ways for making a very effective motor slash generator combination, as shown here. It needs to be realized that these arrangements are not conventional arrangements and that the rewound motors operate in a different way to motors bought off the shelf. For this reason, it is necessary to isolate the electrical output to prevent current flowing through the load from affecting the operation of the motor slash generator combination. This can be done by placing a diode in each of the output lines and charging a capacitor bank which is then used to feed whatever load is to powered. If my understanding is correct, then feeding any cold electricity produced into a capacitor causes the current to become conventional hot electricity. It is not clear if that action is part of this arrangement although the circuitry shown should be used. This is the second version. Politics comments on these arrangements as follows. As we excite the input of the motor, the generator will start producing energy and that additional energy will flow through the motor output side because they are connected in series here. Two rectifiers must be connected at both output terminals, positive and negative, to avoid backflow from closing the circuit through the load. As the motor accelerates, the generator boosts the energy flow which then runs through the motor augmenting the output fields and when the output is loaded then an engagement of both machines occurs as they start to compensate each other through their output flows. It should be understood that the output should be capacitor banked in a dedicated reservoir. When designing a generator for a specific, existing asymmetric motor machine, it must be understood that generator interactions should be considered to run as counter rotation to the motor machine's originally conceived rotation, which is easily done by just moving. Brush lines passing stator bisector angles to the opposite of those needed for a motor, or alternatively, setting the timing backwards. This will definitively enhance the assisted rotation of both machines when connected together in this facet-to-face mode. 
As I do not find the forum comments easy to understand, I recommend that you visit the forum and read the posts as you may well understand the conversations easier to follow than I do. On the forum, Sanskara 316 states I have rewound a small 3 volt 3 pole motor. I used an almost dead, 6 volt sealed lead acid battery to power the motor. This battery just sits at around 4 volts and if given a load, even a small lead, its voltage drops to 1 volt. The rewound motor started very slowly barely spinning, then after a minute or two it started to spin faster, and I noticed that the voltage on the battery was slowly climbing. I connected a small LED flashlight to the generating side and it lit up. Now the battery voltage under load is around 2 plus volts. It's been running for an hour now and the machine squeals a lot. It is conditioning the battery and the meter cannot be showing what really is happening. The motor draws 300 ma. That's not possible as the battery just doesn't have that power. To which you have politics remarks. Well I am glad you have witnessed some of the effects these rewound motors do recondition batteries remember. Radiant energy is taking over the machine so radiant energy comes out through the input also which is the reason why we get high volts amps reading on a meter these motors use very small. Amounts of current and volts. Inside the motor, every coil is being self electromagnetically pulsed because they auto disconnect from the power source. Then the next coil in the sequence is assisted by the first coil when it has rotated to its next position, and so on. The commutator switching has become a self-oscillator for every independently energized coil. Another forum member process hero says. I have also replicated the battery charging events that Sanskara 316 indicated. I started with a 12 volt 4 amp hour battery which I had been using with another circuit two weeks ago and had not recharged it after using it for hours. It was sitting at 12.40 volts. I took my best running rewound motor, plugged it in direct and ran it. The battery voltage dropped to 12.24 volts and stayed at that level for 30 seconds. The battery voltage then started to rise 1 slash 100 of a volt per minute. When it was at 12.27 volts, I disconnected the motor, the total runtime was less than 5 minutes. I then let it rest for 5 minutes. At the end of the 5 minutes, the battery voltage had risen to 12.43 volts and is still at that voltage now. Just think what a larger motor would do on a big battery bank. Everybody needs to document this test as it proves what you at Politics said. New DC motors, and particularly cheap motors will have brushes which do not mate cleanly with the commutator slip ring sectors and so, when the modification has been made. Running the motor for some time allows the brushes to wear in and that raises the efficiency of the electrical connections which in turn, improves the performance of the motor. If you wish to build and test one of these motors, then you can find help and support in the forum with your questions answered and numerous videos and photographs from different experimenters to help you. The symmetry of darkness. For over 130 years our planet has been ruled by crippled and dogmatic science, serving assignments from their funding corporations. Bankers, oil cartels, among other interests. Not to serve and benefit humanity, like science is supposed to. One of the biggest twists science ever took, started in 1880. James Clerk Maxwell. The father of magnetism in his very organized work on electromagnetism, classified two main separate systems, since both, were completely different one from the other. 1. The asymmetrical systems. 2. The symmetrical systems. The magnificence of Maxwell equations, a masterpiece of science, that should have never been modified. However, one year after Maxwell death in 1879, Scientist Hendrik Lorentz, financed by J.P. Morgan and Thomas A. Edison, founders of General Electric Co. Started the symmetrization of all Maxwell-Lien equations. 
This mutilation to Maxwell's scientific work started in 1880 and lasted more than two decades, resulting in a complete deletion of all asymmetrical systems. Including the Hebicide's giant curled M equations and Ponting energy flow component. No electrical engineer on our planet would ever be taught the asymmetrical systems. Our access will be forever restricted to the closed symmetrical systems, where energy conservation, and the first and second laws of thermodynamics conveniently prevails. For over 130 years science has only recognized a model that is based on constant self-canceling electromagnetic interactions. Always resulting in symmetrically balanced equations to zero or cop, coefficient of performance, will never be equal to one, but always, will remain on the minus side, cop one. All the existing electrical motors and generators in our planet are based on this symmetrical system technology. None of them will ever deliver an efficiency at least equal to 100%, wherein those low efficiency levels, a great amount will be lost energy or transformed into undesired and unnecessary heat. This symmetrically inefficient system adopted by our crippled sciences, not only wastes energy in heat, but due to this loss. A requirement of very high levels of energy consumption is demanded, voltage amperage, to be able to achieve its duty. Their always high temperature operation, limits the lifespan of its must of times non-replaceable consumables. But this are not all disadvantages the system brings along. This symmetrical interactions of opposite, but identical magnitude, generates constant heavy front end collisions of electrons and flux, that flows within the system. This constant electrons and flux head on collisions generates negative currents and magnetic drag, that reduces even more the overall performance of this already inefficient symmetrical technology. When you turn science into dogma, is when you lock in on a given model. You assume your model is perfect, and therefore anything that does not agree with that model cannot possibly exist in nature. Tom Bearden A closer look at electrodynamic symmetrical systems. The symmetry when applied to electrodynamics, does not relates to the geometrical or architectural disposition of their components design, but to the methods, interactions, they utilize to achieve rotation, motors, or to obtain electricity based on rotation, generators. Therefore, a detailed review of this electromagnetic interactions will help us to understand better the symmetrical systems. A symmetrical system continuously energizes their coils, meaning, no idle stage or break, but instead, at specific degree reverses the input to the coils. By reversing the coil's electrical input, rotation is achieved, since magnetic polarity also reverses. A closer look at the vertical plane delimited by the brushes, where the symmetrical reversal occurs. Observing through the input conductors, where at start, a steady one-way flow, begin entering the system, represented by the blue particles. Encounters an oncoming traffic, randomly traveling, of opposite charged particles, red, creating heavy collisions, resistance, friction, delivering heat and high energy losses. Neutralizing to zero power. Right here, at the reversing commutation center, all energy is converted or transformed to excessively high operating temperatures. 2. Creation of reversal flux, generating friction or magnetic drag, that rest power to rotation. 3. Reversed electronic flow, negative feedback, generates high reverse spikes, friction, slowing flow. The residual energy able to survive this battle is used to perform the duty assigned. Then. This crippled science created the storyteller of blaming all this losses, to the back or counter EMF, and notice EMF means here electromotive force not, counter electromagnetic field. When all this losses are due to counter electromagnetic fields generated by the symmetrical systems. The counter electromotive forces are just consequences of the main counter magnetic actions. Physics states, 
that an electric motor can never run an electric generator efficiently as its main prime mover, legally speaking, therefore, never will be able to produce any over unity systems or excess of energy over input or a COP1. It should be completely understood since science is referring to the only model they have locked in time for over 130 years. The symmetrical systems, how could they power or run another machine if they can barely handle their assigned job? Then, the real purpose of all this crippling comes to its final conclusion. The only prime movers, as heaven sent that could perform that Herculean job will be the stinking, oil leakers and farting lethal gases, obsolete dinosaurs. The gas diesel engines. Now you could answer many pending questions. 1. Why are we still dependents of oil gas engines? 2. Why we do not have a self-charging, 100% efficient electric vehicle as of now? 3. Why we do not have flying electric crafts? 4. Why we cannot have an independent, off-the-grid, non-pollutant self-feeding generator in every home? The symmetry had been broken before by many bright inventors through decades, but trying to protect their ideas inventions. They have fallen in the traps of government patent offices around the world, and they were seized. Inventor secrecy laws had sealed their lips and tied their hands. Nikola Tesla, October 2, 1888, patent number 3904148 a dynamo electric machine. known that I, Nikola Tesla, a subject of the Emperor of Austria, from Smoljan, Lyka, border country of Austria-Hungary, now residing at New York, in the county and state of New York, have invented certain new and useful improvements in dynamo electric machines, of which the following is a specification. Reference being had to the drawings accompanying and forming a part of the same. In certain patents granted to Charles F. Peck and myself, notably in patents no. 381,968 and number 382,280, May 1, 1888, I have shown and described the plan of constructing and operating motors, transformers, and the like. By alternating currents conveyed through two or more independent circuits from a generator having such relation to the motors or transformers as to produce therein a progressive movement of the magnetic poles or lines of force. In the said applications, the description and illustrations of the generators were confused to those types of alternating current machine, in which the current generating coils are independent or separate, but I have found that the ordinary forms of continuous current dynamos now is use may be readily and cheaply adapted to my system, or utilized both as continuous and alternating current generators, with but slight changes in their construction. The mode of affecting this forms the substance of my present application. Generally stated, the plan pursued by me in carrying out this invention is as follows. On the shaft of a given generator, either in place of or in addition to the regular commutator, I secure as many pairs of insulated collecting rings as there are circuits to be formed. Now, it will be understood that in the operation of any dynamo electric generator, the currents in the coils in their movement through the field of force undergo different phases that is to say. At different position of the coils. The currents have certain directions and certain strengths and that in my improved motors or transformers it is necessary that the currents in the energizing coils should undergo a certain order. Of variations in strength and direction. Hence, the further step is the connection between the induced or generating coils of the machine and the contact rings from which the currents are to be taken off will be determined solely by what order of variations of strength and direction in the currents is desired for producing a given result in the electrical translating device. This may be accomplished in various ways, but in the drawings I have given typical instances.
only of the nest and most practicable ways of applying the invention to three of the best known types of machines in order to illustrate the principle and to enable anyone skilled in the art to apply the invention in any other case or under any modified conditions which the circumstances of particular cases may require. Figure 1 is a diagram illustrative of the mode of applying the invention to the well-known type of closed or continuous circuit machines. Fig 2 is a similar diagram containing an armature with separate coils connected diametrically, or what is GNERLI called an open circuit machine. Fig 3 is a diagram showing the application of the invention to a machine, the armature coils of which have common joint. Referring to Fig 1, let A represent one of my improved motors or transformers, which, for convenience, I shall designate A converter, which consists of an annular core, B. Wound with four independent coils, C and D, those diametrically opposite being connected together, so as to cooperate in pairs in establishing free poles in the ring. The tendency of each pair being to fix the poles at 90 degrees from the other. There may be an armature, F, within the ring, which is wound with coils closed upon themselves. The object is to pass through coil C and D currents of such relative strength and direction, as to produce a progressive shifting or movement of the points of maximum magnetic effect around the ring, and to thereby maintain a rotary movement of the armature. I therefore secured to the shaft F of the generator four insulated contact rings, A, B, C, D, upon which I caused to bear the collecting brushes A, B, C, D, connected by wires G, G, H, H, respectively, with the terminal of coil C and D. Assume, for sake of illustration, that the coils D, D are to receive the maximum and 100 coil C, C at the same instant the minimum current, so that the polar line may be midway between the coils D, D. The rings AB would therefore be connected to the continuous armature coil at its neutral points with respect to the field, or the point corresponding with that of the ordinary commutator brushes, and between which exists the greatest difference of potential, while ring CD would be connected to two points in the coil, between which exists no difference of potential. The best results will be obtained by making these connections at points equidistant from one another, as shown. These connections are easiest made by using wires L between the rings and the loops or wires J, connecting the coil I to the segments of the commutator K. When the converters are made in this manner, it is evident that the phases of the currents in the sections of the generator coil will be reproduced in the converter coils. For example, after turning through an arc of 90 degrees, the conductors LL, which before conveyed the maximum current, will receive the minimum current by reason of the change in the position of their coils, and it is evident, that for the same reason, the current in set coils has gradually fallen from the maximum to the minimum in passing through the arc of 90 degrees. In this special plan of connections, the rotation of the magnetic poles of the converter will be synchronous with that of the armature coils of the generator, and the result will be the same. Either the energizing circuits are derivations from a continuous armature coil, or from independent coils, as in my previous devices. I have shown in Fig. 1. In dotted lines, the brushes MM in their proper normal position. In practice these brushes may be removed from the commutator and the field of the generator excited by an external source of current. Or the brushes may be allowed to remain on the commutator and to take off a converted current to excite the field, or to be used for other purposes. In a certain well-known class of machines, the armature contains a number of coils the terminals of which connect to commutator, segments, the coils being connected across the armature pairs. The type of machine is represented in Fig. 2 in this machine, each pair of coils goes through the same phases as the coils in some of the generators I have shown. And it is obviously only necessary to utilize them in pairs or sets to operate one of my converters, by extending the segments of the commutators belonging to each pair of coils. And causing a collecting brush to bear on the continuous portion of each segment. In this way, two or more circuits may be taken off from the generator, each including one or more pairs or sets of coils, as may be desired. In Fig 2. 
I represent the armature coils, TT the poles of the field magnet, and F the shaft carrying the commutators, which are extended to form continuous portions ABCD. The brushes bearing on the continuous portions for taking off the alternating currents are represented by ABCD. The collecting brushes, or those which may be used to take off direct current, are designated by MM. Two pairs of armature coils and their commutators are shown in the figure as being utilized, but all may be utilized in a similar manner. There is another well-known type of machine, in which three or more coils, ABC on the armature have a common joint, the free ends being connected to the segments of a commutator. This form of generator is illustrated in FIG. Three in this case, each terminal of the generator is connected directly or in derivation to a continuous ring, ABC, and collecting brushes ABC, bearing thereon. Take off the alternating currents that operate the motor. It is preferable in this case to employ a motor or transformer with three energizing coils, A, B, C, placed symmetrically with those of the generator. And the circuits from the latter are connected to the terminals of such coils either directly as when they are stationary or by means of brushes E and contact rings E. In this, as in the other cases, the ordinary commutator may be used on the generator, and the current taken from it, is utilized for exciting the generator field magnets or for other purposes. These examples serve to illustrate the principle of invention. It will be observed that in any case, it is necessary only to add the continuous contact or collecting rings, and to establish the connections between them and the appropriate coils. It will be understood that this invention is applicable to other types of machines as, for example, those by which the induced coils are stationary and the brushes and magnet revolve. But the manner of its application is obvious to one skilled in the art. Having now described my invention, what I claim is, 1. The combination, with a converter having independent energizing coils, of a continuous or direct current dynamo or magneto machine. And intermediate circuits permanently connected at suitable points to the induced or generating coils of the generator, as herein set forth. 2. The combination, with a converter provided with independent energizing circuits of a continuous or direct current generator provided with continuous collecting rings connected in derivation to the armature coils. To form the terminals of circuits corresponding to those of the converter, as herein set forth. Dr. Nikola Tesla Patent Main Emdement Description and Legal Disclaimer Part I. To whom it may concern. The cited prior art describes the main claims of patent number 390,414, legally time-stamped and available at the official get set of the www.usb2.gov. As most of Nikola Tesla's art, it relates to asymmetrical systems, considered by classic science as obsolete, therefore, banned from further material to be taught at universities of the related fields worldwide. To all those knowledgeable in the arts, it will be clearly understood that drive Nikola Tesla main electrodynamic machines embodiments consist of independently energized coils and circuits. That could be configured in pairs or sets thereof, independently, understood as a being isolated from the rest. Dr. Nikola Tesla patent main embodiment description and legal disclaimer part 2. Understanding the extent of such structures, to be employed in any given part of the dynamo electric machine, as stators, armatures or directly related to. As means of controlling or regulating circuits, and others. Further legal scope of the intellectual property of drive Nikola Tesla could be also found at previous page link address. It will be completely understood that any other means to control, regulate, connect and or operate, such type of machines configurations, as stated in all drive Tesla's art, will be considered as an improvement to a prior granted art, therefore, such material must not be considered of enough grounds to obtain the granting of a solely and unique art, as is. The granting of a patent, anywhere on the earth globe. Furthermore, an improvement based on newer advanced technology to run, 
operate or control such main embodiments, should be calcified also as non-patentable intellectual art. The symmetry fraud exposed. The symmetry relates to the way coils are connected as a continuous closed loop, reversing polarities every certain degrees, here are at 180. Every 180 degree this coil crashes its input currents against our own induced charges from previous turns, as they will always oppose symmetrically to each other's. The percentage of this opposed forces ranges from 50 to 90 percent to subtract from total power input, depending on the load, assigned job duty, to motor. Where residues of 50 slash 10 percent is the leftover gain now, it will be absolutely understood that this charges, forced to become opposed by the symmetry, must be subtracted from our input. Leaving the small residue as the rotor total operating force. This opposed currents to energy we put in, science has taught every electrical engineering school in our planet for over 130 years. That is called back or counter EMF, BEMF or CEMF. When in reality this opposed energy flow is forced to be generated, every nanosecond of rotation, in all motors and generators as a consequence of symmetrical systems. I call this counter electromotive force, or BEMF, or CEMF. A witch that has damned spell on our beautiful planet for over 130 years, but the spell is about to be broken. Let's take a closer look at the witchcraft spell. Now our physics says, the spell, what actually moves the armature, rotor, current through the armature coils is the difference between the voltage applied to the motor, EA, minus the counter EMF, EC. In other words the witch devours a very high percentage of whatever energy we put in. And the worst part is the more we put in, the stronger the witch grows. And the witchcraft spell continues. Thus EAEC is the actual voltage effective in the armature, and it is this effective voltage, which determines the value of the armature current. Since generally I equal E slash R from Ohm's law, in the case of the DC motor, IA equal, EAEC, slash RE translating into plain English. If we don't kill, or even better, get the witch to work on our favor, we will never, ever get rid of stinking gas diesel engines let's see real values when motor is on load, at work. F equal EAEC equal 12, 1 to 9, 0 equal 3, 1 effective voltage. Wasted energy 9, 0 volts. Simple math. We spent 12, 1 volts, the witch devours 9, 0 volts, 74, 4%, leaving 3, 1 volts of actual operating power, which means 25%. Wow, what a great deal. This loss percentage could vary up to 80-90% depending on many different T factors. Coefficient of performance, COP, of this machines would be, COP equal effective voltage divided applied voltage COP equal 3, 112, 1 equals 0, 256. It is very obvious that we will never reach a cop equal 1 the which will never allow it. Now, we just observed that previous diagram in two-dimensional plane, rigid, not dynamically moving, not how really occurs in reality. So, let's see the witch at work. In order to have a complete full understanding of symmetrical versus asymmetrical electrodynamics, all this 3D models will contain a virtual symmetry plane, where the coil's reversal occurs or don't. The which, CEMF, represented by battery, have a live energy level, blue liquid, establishing the charge-discharge sequences it follows. All we are doing is charging this battery, in order that when it reverses, fires back at our own input, 
resting power and more losses. Charging time, battery full. Here, as it passes the symmetry plane, starts the reversal at commutator's brushes, coil current is then injected in opposite direction to our own input. Energy charge at CEMF battery to lowest levels, end of discharging cycle. Time to recharge again, and so on. The witch storyteller keeps going on, while we all pay, to keep show running. This counter effect occurs every nanosecond of rotation, the model shown here is based on one coil turn loop, for simplicity and better understanding. However, in real life, Every motor and generator contains hundreds AF turns per dozens of coils, therefore. This fake CEMF battery have lots more capacity to charge than to fire back at ourselves with even heavier ammunition. This fake counter effect is present in all motors and generators. In motor is a generator effect and in generators is a motor effect, very symmetrically. A coil stores its charges similar to a battery, but more likely to non-polarized capacitors, for short periods of time. Meaning, they take very well polarity reversals transmitting the charges back at very fast rates. Coils store charges in their magnetic field, as physics states. Then, traveling within magnetic fields, like it occurs in motors and generators, enhances and delays their performance. Attribute, not too good for us in symmetrical systems. Resuming this brief analysis on symmetrical electrodynamic systems, or the revelation of secrets from the witchcraft spell, part one this machines managed to burn. Waste and use most of the energy we put inside of them in matter of seconds. The compensation we get as return are pure losses, resulting in very expensive operation, that only sets them all, as low-level apparatus and inferior than the Herculean, gas and diesel engines. The second enigma of the witchcraft spell, lies in another component an exact coil of magnetic wire. But physics keeps it within another domain completely far away from electrodynamic machines engineering reach, requirements or needs to employ or study. The part that I did not understood completely well, is that the particular component reacts differently than others of exact same material composition, concepts and design. And just because they work in open environment, at least a small portion of time, they manifest very interesting attributes not similar at all to their twin brothers. Suffocated working inside the extremely high temperatures of symmetrical motors and generators. The enigmatic electronic component is called the inductor, also known as choke and many years bassy as reactor. And even though it is the oldest of electronics components, it is still in very active use in most of state-of-the-art electronic equipments. Here we will take a look at a simple, boost converter that belongs to the switching power supply family, where the inductor still prevails as the main component, even surrounded by the latest electronic technology. The interesting thing is, that all an inductor consists of, is just a plain and simple coil of magnetic wire, wrapped around not so specific either, piece of material, that could be porcelain, mica, ferrite or even air. L1 inductor, D1 ultrafast diode. C1 output cap, Q2, and MOSFET, ultra-fast switch, triggered by the oscillator square signal to its gate. When Q2 receives a low flat signal, it closes, charging L1, inductor, as signal departs vertically, Q2 opens but, when opened, L1 reverses its voltage polarity. Then D1 diode allows the plus charge forward, charging C1. Circuit operation is simple. 1. At stage 1, inductor charges, closed. 2. Stage 2, inductor discharges, 
Open through D1. Charging C1. 3. At continuous operation mode, C1 feeds output load. Notice the main role here is performed by inductor L1. It is the heart of this whole system, but the issue to analyze are its intrinsic properties to swap voltage polarity at open stages when idling not connected to any input. The oldest explanation from our classic physics states. The collapsing magnetic field lines of flux cuts the inductor wires in the opposite direction, that when charging, producing an opposite electrical flow the other fact is. When signal drops down to off stage it does it at exactly zero time, zero point no time for all that long process of collapse reverse fluxing reversing voltage polarity now. What actually happens there? As we apply voltage to a coil, it generates a magnetic field, and as we collapse our signal, there is an immediate natural reaction response to our action. An opposite magnetic field is created, developing a reversed current. But we must collapse either by short or by switch off our input to the coil, S, not reverse it, like symmetry does. Then nature will respond in a grateful and generous reaction radiant energy field has been excited, and it will be greater than our input, spent, energy. Laws of nature. Laws of God. And finally here is my own concept to break the symmetry in an existing symmetrical world. I have used Tesla's secret as the main embodiment to configure, two independently isolated pairs of coils I supply input to each alternatively, at different times in a linear connection. Not in a symmetrically radial old fashion, where positive negative are facing each other's no. So we get to maintain each coil always, at one side of the symmetry plane one to charge, the other to discharge. I have set up the same exact model as before, but in a duality of independently set structures, where each one has its own battery and resistance. Please watch the batteries reverse, as they fill a blue liquid, energy, at charge stage, to then discharge it at the opposite side of symmetrical plane. When RPMs are higher, and no load is applied, batteries retains a charge, but in harmony with incoming flow, so the input required is much less. It will be obvious, that if we connect bottom terminals positive negative, still feeding input at left lower negative. Then take a reading of upper left positive to upper left right negative, we will have an excess of power, than we have put in. Seriously as a heart attack. Just because, the witch, has become a charming princess, and with lots of class still will be forever assisting us to thrive. And so, 132 long years of witchcraft spell has been broken, my dear friends, I am certain you will make better improvements. Better applications and state-of-the-art tech systems will do wonders in the field of electronics. I will do posting videos on how to convert witches in princesses, back and forth. There is so much more to this new concepts. This is just the beginning of a golden era. UF Politics 3 pole asymmetric DC motor. UF Politics 5 pole asymmetric motor. It is obviously only necessary to utilize them in pairs or sets to operate one of my converters by extending the segments of the commutators belonging to each pair of coils and causing a collecting brush to bear on the continuous portion of each segment. In this way two or more circuits could be taken off from the generator, each including one or more pairs or sets of coils, as may be desired. This is how I understand the wind ionizing, correct me when I am wrong, the picture is a top view of the rotor with magnets. Attach wire to the upper commutator at P1 and wrap magnetic wire 25 times through holes marked P4 and P1 in the picture, do not cut the wire. And wind 25 times, same direction as previous coil, through holes marked P1 and P3. 
Do not cut the wire and attach it to lower commutator at the pole exactly opposite to P1. Cut the wire. Total wire resistance should be between 1.2 or 1.6 ohm. Now start at P2 through holes, 25x, P5, P2 attached to holes, 25x, P2, P4 attach cable again to lower commutator at the posing pole to P2 etc. In total you make 5 V-shaped, 2 pair serial, coils. Winding instructions initial marking up the end of the rotor with the longer shaft is called the upper end. At the upper end, using a permanent marker, number the upper commutators, 1 through to 5 in a clockwise direction. Now number the lower commutators, noting that they will take the number of the marked commutator vertically in line above. Referring to Fig 1, and looking at the upper end of the rotor, locate commutator 1, noting that it is adjacent to a bar. Now move clockwise to the next bar, the slot clockwise from the bar, is slot A mark the entrance to slot A with a permanent marker, as shown this is a reference point winding. At the upper end attach the wire to commutator 1 tap. Take the wire down through slot A, and bring up through slot D, and take to slot A this is one turn. Repeat for 24 more times, which will give 25 left windings once the 25 winding are done, the wire should be at the upper side of slot A. Take the wire down slot A, and bring up through slot C. And take to slot A, repeat 24 more times. After 25 right winding, take wire down slot A and attach wire to lower commutator 1 tab. Asymmetrical P10 pairs coils all north rotor. A10 pole P10 series, all north rotor fields. Wire, 23 aug. Turns, 30. Total R, pair, 0, 9 ohms. Hello UFO politics. First of all, let me thank you for what you are doing for all of us, for sharing your truly amazing finding with the world, only good hearted men do it and you sure are one of them. I've watched all of your videos, and I have two doubts about your motors. Please correct me if I'm wrong. One I can clearly see that the motor RPM raises as it goes, and specially in the self-acceleration slash battery Reagan video of yours, and also the voltage on the batteries increase. Does this mean that if you leave it running for a few hours, A for example, that it may fully regenerate rechargeable batteries? Two from your other videos, I understand that in pulsing systems, in the same timeline of energy feeding. If the pulses are shorter, in time, that the output power of the pulse from the coil will be higher? If so, then, the more poles a motor has, the more efficient it will become within the asymmetric domain? Again, I'm a layman when it comes to this, as my area of work is another one. But your fascination with your findings is the same as mine, and I am glad and lucky I've came across your videos. I appreciate your time, and thank you once again for your kindness. Acceleration under load a statement considered by classic physics as not possible of course. Not possible with the obsolete electromagnetism we all have learned on school or engineering universities across this planet. Acceleration under load could be a mechanical or electrical load where no machine would be able capable to accelerate under those conditions but to decrease power to minimal specifications or to a full stop slash stall. UF Politics Imperial Asymmetric Motors A mutilated knowledge had been kept secret for over 130 years just to keep us all dependent on only one source of energy, oil. We never needed the stinking, leaking, farting gas diesel engines, the obsolete dinosaurs. They have lied to us, and the proof is here. A wrestling fight we all have been waiting for over 130 long years of final battle where oil slash gas slash diesel engines would not be required ever again just clean. 
pure green and free energy will be powering our houses. Our vehicles, our industry, our planet, the game. The dynasty of oil is over coming soon to a theater near you. UF politics asymmetric imperial all north pole motor. Imperial P56 dual commutator asymmetric wind type, four pole pairs all north generation. This motor is a four staters. Therefore, this interactions will mirror at 180 degrees apart. These are just three pair sequence switching on simultaneously by brush contact. These five steps will take place in nanoseconds during high RPMs operation. This procedure is done in order to make sure P2C2 bisector will disconnect before reaching south stator bisector. At high RPMs, magnetic fields in attraction mode tend to bend towards the opposite polarized stators reason why we must disconnect the attract ending coils before reaching alignment between attracting. Bisectors which are the higher density magnetic area. Symmetric versus asymmetric electromagnetic systems. I wanted to start this thread before I move on to disclose the type of motors and generators that took me to the paths of radiant energy in another thread as they are based on asymmetric technology. I certainly believe it will help understand the concept better. Avoiding future comparisons conflicts between these two completely different systems it took me a while to put all this material together. It is backed up by several tests with many different types of sizes and configuration models that I have built over more than two decades. Plus all the research and developed work that goes back in our history to more than a century ago I will keep this document as simple as possible, in order to be understood easier. The main body of this document is written by me, and please forgive any misspellings or not to well redacted text, whenever I copy paste paragraphs. I will insert a reference to a link at the bottom of this thread. I will try to maintain it as brief as possible. The history. The father of magnetism, James Clerk Maxwell, gave us an incredible and great dynamic theory of electromagnetism, his analysis extends to the deepest interactions basically from space. The Vortex Theory of Molecules The scientists of his time found his theory very hard to accept not only because of its complexity, but the way he refers to as an electromagnetic field. Something intangible and not simple to analyze Maxwell's theory becomes simple and intelligible only when you give up thinking in terms of mechanical models. Instead of thinking of mechanical objects as primary and electromagnetic stresses as secondary consequences. You must think of the electromagnetic field as primary and mechanical forces as secondary. 2. At his final developments he derived into two main fields to calculate study his electromagnetic theory. 1. The symmetric systems. 2. 2. The asymmetric systems. The symmetrical systems were the ones adopted by all E, electrical engineering, universities in the world since the fall of the 19th century, 1880, to late 1890s. Right after the death of Maxwell in 1879, the Heaviside vectorial equation started to suffer a process of symmetrization by Nobel Prize scientist Hendrik Lorentz. Financed by J.P. Morgan and Thomas A. Edison asymmetrical systems were completely disregarded from further teachings in any technological center or universities of the related fields in the world. Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden writes, H. A. Lawrence was the man who was elicited to do the necessary symmetrization with ease, thereby accomplishing exactly what Morgan decreed to his own advisors that must be done. Get rid of those Tesla systems capable of taking and freely using M energy from the active medium. H. A. Lawrence, with a T, simply lifted and used what L. V. Lawrence, without the T, had already done. For the deliberate fixing of the already sharply curtailed Heaviside equations, C.H.A. Lorentz, La Theory Electromagnetic D. Maxwell E.T. Sun Application Auxiliary Corm Events. The Electromagnetic Theory of Maxwell and its Application to Moving Bodies, Arch. Neil. Psi. Volume 25, 1892, P363-552. Also in H. A. Lorentz, Collected Papers, The Hague, Martina Snitchhoff, Val.
2, pages 168 to 238, especially P 168. This is the work that Lawrence cites later, in 1895, for his proof of the symmetrical riga yujing theorems, the two equations of symmetrical riga yujing This is the symmetrization, at the direction of J.P. Morgan, of the Heaviside equations that arbitrarily discarded all remaining asymmetrical maxwell lian systems thus discarding all systems that receive excess M energy. Freely from the active medium, active vacuum, and could use this free energy to power loads and themselves. With this fix, Morgan was assured that Tesla's discovery of the active medium and that M energy could be extracted from it would never be taught. 1. All the motors that we have access up to now are symmetrical. Symmetrical systems are closed systems that equal zero in a balanced equation of energy conservation. They balance by cancelling and constant reverse electromagnetic interactions. Motors related. The main concept. The symmetry or asymmetry does not necessarily relate to the geometrical and structural disposition of any given electromagnetic system components. But to the way they interact internally or externally with each other's. Example, we could have a three-pole armature motor, very asymmetrical, and two stators, but still falling within the symmetrical systems category. The asymmetric systems are open systems, when applying them to motor structure coils configured in a fashion as not to interconnect them as a whole pack in a serial or parallel circuit, but disposed independently connected by pairs or by groups of sequenced pairs. Asymmetric systems expands to all electric electromagnetic systems that includes transformers and capacitors. A typical asymmetrical transformer is the Tesla core less coil, and all derivations from different inventors through decades, like Don Smith or Toril Kopinad's models. The typical symmetrical motors we are familiar with and mostly used up to now in daily applications, is the lap or overlap winding, it applies to all PM brushed motors and also to universal motors. The only difference in the last one is that it uses a stator as a winded coil or field versus a PM, permanent magnet stator. This type of winding connected in series all coils in the armature, overlapping between coils, it is also known as a short circuit motor depending on the design, two or four brushes stators. The 360 degrees turn will be divided in two or four sections, where sequences of coils change voltage and magnetic polarity as soon as it leaves a section. This cancels all external magnetic resonance or feedback of every coil, Electron and flux collision galore generates undesired heat. Therefore most of this machines require a fixed fan to the end of shaft. This is the symmetrical obsolete systems we use every day, from an automobile window, windshield wiper, seats adjustments, starter, fan blowers, etc, etc. All the way to drills, handheld or AC. Hair blowers, air conditioning fans, vacuum cleaners, etc, etc. The list is endless. An exception to the brushed motor, also symmetrical, would be the lately used BLDC motor, brush less direct current, which uses a DC three-phase square wave. Generated by three channels of heavy-duty MOSFETs, since their windings could be only two types, star, Y, or delta. Both connect in series with each other's. However, this type of motors does not have yet the powerful starting torque like a brushed motor. It could be achieved, but by heavy duty and expensive controlling management circuitry, and not applicable in limited small space like a brushed motor could be installed. Lately is being used in EV and small utility recreational transport vehicles, like golf carts, bikes, scooters, etc. It is understood that all AC motors, by the nature of its type of sine wave that fluctuates between negative positive every 50 to 60 hertz slash second plus the type of windings they utilize, will be also included in the symmetrical closed systems. Symmetrical systems explained by Tom Bearden. It is that Lorentz symmetrical Riga Eugene of the equations and the ubiquitous use of the well-grounded closed current loop circuit containing both the external, transmission, 
circuit and load. And the basic source of potential, i.e., the generator, in it that is the problem. The closed current loop circuit physically enforces Lorentz symmetrical Riga Eugene, which in turn guarantees back EMF, or MMF, is equal to forward EMF in our M circuits and systems. Hence it forces half of the free Riga Eugene energy from the vacuum appearing in the external circuit to be used for nothing but destroying the main source of potential, the main source of dipolarizing the circuitry. The other half of the energy is used to power the loads and losses in the external circuit. So less than half is used to power the load, while a full half is used to destroy the source dipolarity. To restore the dipolarity requires that we then input at least as much as was used to destroy it. Hence we are forced always to input and pay more energy to restore the source dipolarity, that actually extracts the energy from the vacuum, than we get out there as power in the load. I.e., we always have COP 1.0 power systems, unless we ring in some normal natural observable energy from the environment as from a flowing river, blowing wind, solar radiation, etc. Such a closed current loop circuit and resulting M system can never produce COP10 from the vacuum. Even though all the fields and potentials and energy appearing in the external circuit are extracted directly from the local vacuum by their associated source charges in that circuit, a priori. Simply look into the known polarization of the vacuum that occurs from the presence of any charge, and then examine what asymmetry of opposite charges i.e. Asymmetry of that dipolarization means. It means that the beast directly absorbs virtual energy from the seething vacuum, coherently integrates it into observable photon energy size, and re-emits the energy as real. Observable M energy emitted in all directions. We have previously shown the solution to that source charge problem, taken directly from particle physics. We also showed the fundamental coherent integration mechanism that is able to consume positive entropy of the virtual state and produce negative entropy in the observable state. 3. Most of Nikola Tesla original patents of motors generators are based on independent pairs of coils, creating dipoles, or groups thereof, several dipoles, independently connected, open. Not connected in series through all the circuit as a huge short then we have all other suppressed motor generators technology not easily available and most of times not containing all the specs. To be reproduced except that we build it ourselves. The asymmetrical systems since they are open, they allow to create a series of exchange of energy reaction to our inputs. Based on electromagnetic resonance or electromagnetic feedback in every spin, on a motor, or in every pulse of input in a static coil. One of the first asymmetrical motor was Faraday's unipolar motor, later modified by Nikola Tesla. Asymmetrical systems does not violate the energy conservation laws, since they are not part of them. The asymmetric electromagnetic systems expands all the way to transformers, capacitors, inductors, however, my main purpose in this thread is to focus in electrodynamic machines. If someone is interested in reviewing a great article dedicated to asymmetrical coils, transformers and capacitors. I recommend Vladimir Utkin free energy article PDF that I found posted at the Don Smith thread. Thanks for reading it, and I hope it defines properly the two systems differences. My regards to all. UFO politics. The asymmetrical electromagnetic systems, disregarded so far by science and E. Offer the advantages of exchanging components, coils, from generator to motor and vice versa like Tesla patented in this case. Which is not the only one physics states that a motor is also a generator, and a generator is a motor. However they cannot perform both duties at the same time of course not if we are referring to symmetrical electromagnetic systems but simply. That statement does not apply to asymmetrical systems below is an image from same patent 390414. Where it is demonstrated the possible fusion between both machines motor, exciter called by Tesla here, and generator. 
Asymmetric Imperial Motor Torque Tests and Coefficient of Performance. Torque calculations based on four parameters. 1 HP in, watts in, V asterisk A, slash 746, 1 HP equals 746 watts. 2 total stress force applied in pounds, LB, based on 2 Rapala digital scales readings. 3 RPMs at momentum of force convert to revolutions per second. 4 given circumference of pulley, 16 in equal 1, 33 feet. Other data. Power source, 3 weaker 12V slash 33A equal 36V. DC clamp meter, Klein tools true RMS. DC voltage, AXTECH true RMS multimeter 430. Digital infrared tachometer. In this test, motor is connected in symmetrical parallel, each pairs facing each others at 180. At front rear brush set. Just as they come from factory, battery bank, 312V33 aware cutter. Feeding, straight linear, non-pulsed, reading bolts from batteries drop and DC amps clamp at positive. Switch 1, turns on P1 slash P15 set at 180. Switch 2, turns on P8 slash P22 set at 90. From switch set 1, full quadrant on at stage 1. Southwest 1 on, RPMs reach 7150, consuming 32 amps at stage 2. Southwest 1 on, RPMs rises above 7400 at 33 amps battery drop. Less than 2.0 volts during performance, recuperating almost full at rest, total lost equal 05B. One attribute they all have is the very high torque from the very small radio shack 5 pole to any other of bigger number of poles as it works directly proportional or the more poles. The more torque, so torque is a parameter I feel very comfortable with when it comes to my machines. However there are other attributes you may not be familiar with yet this motors will deliver back to us the unused energy when we turn off any of their inputs they become outputs. Resistance is very low per pair of coils, it is 0.6 to 0.8 total ohms in the pair terminals at commutator elements. Have to realize this motors turn on each set of coils, pairs here, independently from the rest, since each set is isolated. While symmetry turns them all at once and they stay on all times, just swapping polarities, magnetically and voltage polarity, divided by the four brushes, two positive, Two negative. Battery drops less than 2, 2.0 V, amperage, after coil saturation. Current below 32 amps. RPM 7100, 7400 after switch 2 on. Coil windings are not even warm and batteries have lost millivolts, 0, 0, 5. The original 56 frame permanent magnet motor specs. Where coils are wound under the symmetry of darkness, ruled by the 132 year scam. Under this locked in time technology, this poor thing performs as follows. It could barely reach 2500 RPMs by consuming 103 amps and 36 volts. That is 3700 watts, 3, 7 kVA or 3, 7 kilowatt. This means that it will consume approximate in 20 minutes the whole 36V battery bank at test, since they are rated at 33 amps hours up. To turn at 2400 RPMs with 4 horsepower torque. I understand what the original motor specs means it will deliver 2400 RPMs at 4 HP torque load, and consuming 103 amps slash 36 volts or 3.7 kVA to do that job I have an original. Untouched imperial motor that I have kept just to make the real, and not by a data sheet, testing of both machines same bank of batteries same load applied, same reading meters. Our asymmetrically modified motor same exact embodiment, P56 body, could keep 7000 RPMs only using 32 amps at 36 volts, meaning, it will run for an hour before batteries die. 
So many attempts to create efficiency involve ridiculous technology such as hand laid Kevlar laminated laminar flow airfoils for windmills that are useless with no wind. I meant that, with production line changes, these motors could be made with little additional effort, without exotic materials. Tesla's ministry has had similar designs for over 100 years. It's safe now. This simple modification, without any exotic materials, mean a Prius would have three TIMES the range. This motor coil winding configuration design would in my view do great for electric cars. Possibly increasing the range by three and the torque by a lot. I want to clarify something very important here. The poor performance of the original electric motor compared here does not represent, at all, it is due to manufacturing designers fault. It is just the one and only methodology that every electrical engineer in our planet have been taught for more than 132 long years under the supremacy of oil. Nuclear as our only choices. The mechanic life on gas engines is finally coming to an end they will be obsolete dinosaurs very soon. First, I would like to say hello to all of you. I am new to the site, so take it easy on me I was referred here to expose about my findings by Mr. Peter Lindemann. Who I admire much, and got to read his articles out there on the web and agree with him in a complete way in his ways of thinking related to free energy to tell you first and briefly about me I have been involved in. Electrodynamics since 1989, and have developed many different types of motors and generators from structural different embodiments to the fields of electronics controllers and source converters of such machines in other words, I am not a newbie on this, therefore. I do not make the typical errors and omissions of readings parameters required, or analysis of behaviors of related issues, getting or leading to the wrong conclusions that's not me, I mean. <laughs> I am not perfect either, we humans all make mistakes. <clears throat> so here I go about this. While developing one of the types of motors generators designs, I have been recently working on, and building different prototype sizes, smalls, mediums and large. I was finding certain readings containing abnormal current behavior. And this type of motor generator do makes more at output than what they get inch. However, my point in this thread is not about the discussion of this motors, but, I will tell you that I use the counter EMF completely on assistance of the rotation, not against. Like physics says it always must, and that would be impossible. This motors are based on permanent magnets, PM, and brush commutator DC types. And this is just as the development move into a higher stage, they will use other type of switching systems however. I had two intense sparks and got shocked outside its frame when I made contact with my hands and accidentally touched one of the output's terminals while in motion I was working with a 36 volts machine around 6.3 amps lipo batteries, small prototype so, no. It could not be such high shocks from higher currents, even the output been over 80 volts still the amperage was remaining around the input parameters to get that kind of transient sparks so. I started the search on them trying to correct the problem and also the curiosity to find this wired source of energy but then I found that I could create very heavy sparks and very robust and continuous by getting the two terminals I was shocked with, to short out then, I took them apart again, went to my CAD programs, sketches, the 3D animations of coils. Stators to commutators relations I mean dissect them in pieces and I really do not like to keep on going on the research part narration, basically because you will love for me to get to the point, and it was a lot of reproductions I made replicating the exact models. But at static configurations when I finally found the issue, I could not believe it my motors generators, meaning essentially their rotor coil structure to commutator via brushes, were developing a behind my wires secondary electricity of a very extremely powerful characteristics running through them at all times. Then I realized and understood the times when I turned off completely the oscillations of my controller, 
I was using a drain, motor negative, based on an N-channel MOSFETs arrangement that I had designed and built, so that was impossible once that I turned off my oscillator chip from the regulator side that feeds it, it kills, cuts. Every single current coming from source and a small electrolytic cap was set on input only, before voltage regulator stage. However it literally melted a heavy duty mica copper commutator to almost fuse it with the next ones. Before getting to this discovery, I would have never figure it out what happened there this type of motor design have many characteristics that others in the market do not have. One of them is the fact of never needing to reverse the electromagnetic field's polarity in order to achieve rotation, the fields just turn off or turn on, according to the oscillator signals. And I achieve this, by the coils design inside of them. This design allows that at T off of the square wave, circuit opens, rotor idles. And keep going for nanoseconds by inertia and the last magnetic interaction residues to the other stator pole where then is reversed naturally or by what the physics call back electromotive force. And this is how the CEMF assist instead of oppose. To rotation this particular design allows the current to flow in a very organized and friendly flow that makes the consumption reduced to minimum values when rotation is constant. And even in higher acceleration times not like anything else out there, where currents are in a complete war one against each other inside this machines, whether being a DC, brushed or brushless or any AC type. That because of the current natural behavior stays constantly colliding into each other's at positive negative cycles then I read Mr. Tom Bearden about the dipole open. And all about the free energy concepts out there and Nikola Tesla back in the 1800s tapping into radiant energy and kept going till I got to the essence of my discovery then I could not even believe it myself what was what I was getting there I know many of you are going to laugh, I laughed myself I did research the history all, my friends. Because I do not like just to get my lab results naked outside I went all the way to Maxwell equations to Lorentz changes of the asymmetrical fields along with Albert Einstein where they disregarded the ether as been part of the interchange with the electromagnetic fields then the electric engineering took a wrong course towards building the best way to keep killing this. Energy to keep teaching new engineers this are parasitical and transient currents we all have to kill by choke, by flywheel diodes and snubbers. And as many patches, just to cite a few, as they could get their hands on but I will get here to the very bottom of this discussion, or may I say disclosure. I had found. It has always been present between us all, in every coil of enameled wire, in every inductor, in every transformer, motor, generator, no matter type. Or design the main laws of electrodynamics were sold to evil and we all believe them. We swallowed them and I really feel I am putting my knowledge and experience of many years at doubt here with what I am about to reveal, and please, at any time I am trying to minimize or underestimate the work of so many bright scientists we have and had, and engineers, developers, as all of you here, like me, looking for the fountain of the radiant energy. The cold electricity or the divine force of nature converted for our use as energy source it is the counter electromagnetic force, the back EMF. The one who opposes very conveniently to our motors and generators desired motion sense so we have no other choice than to keep using the gas or diesel engines as prime movers to generators and motors that do not. Have the way to compete to the fast and reliable gas new engines to all of you that are into lab and practice work that like to make your own things solder. Cut make weld make electronic diagrams and form great circuits that actually you do not need that much knowledge. Really just to make an oscillator a coil of wire, core less plastic is better than solid or laminated steel, but they will also work, and I will answer the reason why. During the thread on the comments, a couple of fast switching diodes meters, digital oscilloscopes, if you have it, if not some meters reads hertz. You do need at least two. And let's do a very simple test hook up the diodes to the coil inputs, no secondary for now, it works great with a secondary, actually even better. But for sake of simplicity, as a test only let's do it simple, the diodes will be at both ends of coil, 
make sure you know which side is north and south at core. According to turn sense, right hand rule. Okay, the diodes are there to block our input to get out, so we input our positive negative oscillating signal before both diodes, direct to coil. And we read outputs from outer diodes and what they do besides blocking our current out, is filter our radiant energy from our transients, and parasites, ha <laughs> he. The other way around right. Then set readers anywhere to monitor the system. Set the hertz meters on your input signal, before diodes, and also would be good to monitor your consumption with a volts meter and also the same volts hertz at output, make sure your meters have. Overload capabilities, I melted a few Chinese ones, or you will fry them, basically at output. Read batteries or power source, and have ready a load, I use fluorescent bulbs, self-ballasted, 120 volts 65 watts or higher or less, just be very careful when tuning the oscillations up. Or you will blow them, and they contain mercury, HG, not good for human body now, according to the setup each one have would be different, but I used batteries. Lipo or lithium ion 3 packs would be like 36 volts, I have tons of chargers and this batteries, but others are fine too, I also used regular lead acid. Even better they get charged within the system, since you guys and gals are gonna make over unity here. Below I will post a rough diagram I did to show my friends in Facebook and YouTube I will be here to answer any questions. Thanks for reading me and excuse me for writing such a long post. But I wanted to express my knowledge, and how I got to this by complete accident before dumping this bomb on you all. Have a nice evening. Originally posted by UFO Politics View Post. Guess it is part of the balancing process to sand smooth the outer rotor steel laminates, meaning to lathe cut rectify the green epoxy so it runs smooth within stators right? UFO Politics. I have never seen a double-ended rotor commutator. But now that I have it seems like the idea here would be to feed one end power in and the other end or the other commutator would be connected in a way to power something. A sort of rotating input-output motor general I guess I just never saw one before. I'll bet you could have field day running a three battery split POS system on each end is this design from 2014? Is there a self-running machine? Or are you still testing possibilities? Hi Mike. If you go back to the beginning of this thread and take a look at the small 9 VDC motors being experimented with, you will get the idea about what is going on here. Think left to right. Voltage comes in via the left brush and exits via the right brush on the same side. See UFO's many fine drawings and it will become clear. Get two small motors and make one dual commutator motor from them. Then, graduate to something like the P56 that Mr. UFO recommends. About any DC motor will do, and commutators aren't expensive. You need two motors to get end caps and brush rigging. I used the long shaft so as to be able to get work from both ends, kinda like a bench grinder. Your local trade school is a good place to have a longer shaft fabricated and installed if you don't have the tools to do it yourself. I often get the work done pretty much for free. Enjoy. Glenn. Originally posted by UFO Politics View Post. Hello Bromicky and welcome. This is about a new methodology and not just a different way to wind an existing motor as is I will try to explain as a generalization. However, a simple answer. We build motors here, where unused energy flows out, back to our sources to be utilized or stored back. We enhance motor performance with this new tech, where torque and speed parameters no longer coexist as inversely proportional, meaning we can only have one parameter at top performance. Sacrificing the second one to lower specs, but directly proportional, where speed and torque are achieved equally in an ascending curve. This type of motors would take higher potentials ranges, voltages, as higher densities of currents, amperage, 
where closed systems could never afford to process. Since they are limited by closed looping of its rotor coils. Structural modifying. Motor's structure must be modified, as adding a second commutator on the other side of rotor shaft, in some cases shaft must be replaced by a longer one. As outer casing housing also must be elongated to fit the dual commutator's rotor assembly. Coils winding. Once structure is modified, then winding process is also different from existing motors. On any existing motor the winding is a continuous series looping that closes at the end of last wound coil, meaning, all wires are short-circuited or called closed winding. In my methodology coils are isolated or open related to next ones in the sequence. In order that each coil gets energized separately when making contact, then by an action of either repulse or attract, or both, it automatically mechanically, disconnects from contact. Pushing or pulling next coil in line. Disconnected coils travel to a second gate brush, where it exhausts its charge as an output. This way all coils get a break or an idling stage at disconnection, cooling off, plus getting induced by traveling in front of stator's magnetic fields, then reaching output stage. Did you see my video asymmetry to enlightenment? Did you read my abstract at introduction first page of this thread? Hope this post will help you to understand it better. Regards. UFO Politics. Originally posted by Dwayne View Post. Hi UFO. Please excuse my comments on your accent. I have a slight hearing impediment and miss bits of speech. The video is excellent. Hello Dwayne. Please don't worry about my accent I know it is terrible. And believe me I can make it even worse so that was kind of refined. Originally posted by Dwayne View Post. I picked up this Balder armature for another project now shelved a couple of years ago. I have no stator for it. It was rescued from a burnt out motor. It has 28 windings and 56 commutator sections, so I am pleased to see the wiring for this configuration has been demonstrated. It is a heavy cow. It might originally been 3 HP.8090 volts OR180 volts. I got it from my local motor winders who were given it as a repair job that did not proceed. The thing is could you get another identical commutator from Balder? I believe if you had the model number or serial number of motor it would make the part, COMM, search much easier. Originally posted by Dwayne View Post. What has really taken my fancy is your fiberglass stator. Do you think that I would be able to run this armature as you have shown in your videos with a fiberglass stator? I am hoping to utilize it similarly to your combination drive generator page 96. I honestly have not tested that fiberglass stator, air core, on a mechanically loaded motor and since it does not have a steel core IMHO I believe it would not be as strong as with a laminated steel core related to torque specs. Originally posted by Dwayne View Post. Also, when rewinding this as asymmetric, would I use the same gauge of wire that is already on the armature? Many thanks. Dwayne. The wire gauge would be dictated by your source, power supply, plus the application where you would be using it for. A heavy gauge wire, lesser turns per coil, would have low resistance, therefore, amps would be higher, with lower voltage application, like automotive motors, torque would be higher. Since magnetic field would be very strong, a fine wire, many turns per coil, would require higher voltage with lesser amps to build the required field to perform properly with such heavy armature. Regards. UFO Politics. Originally posted by Glenn WV View Post. Greetings all. At long last, I have the armature ready to go. It has been balanced in a motor shop and I hope to get the motor reassembled next weekend. Next. 
a suitable mount will have to be constructed. That is, once I figure out what to hook it to. Lots of testing first though. What an interesting project. Thank you Mr. UFO Politics. Glenn WV. My pleasure Glenn, looking forward to see that beautiful monster running make sure to check continuity resistance in each coil, or coils groups. If that's the case, contact between COMM elements plus alignment. Also check your stator's magnet polarity orientation, NSNS, related to your desired rotation sense versus the feeding, input, brushes positioning to fire each coil group. An all north wound machine of that kind is unique on its class at least on this forum. And it should run superb, when synchronized tuned with high precision. Thing I'd know you would do an excellent job on. Regards. UFO politics. Yes I remember that entry but never equated it to the machines as shown in this post. Mm. The witch video meant little to me at the time but now that I had time to see and read the entire video, I am realizing more. I am just starting to grasp the UFO message after doing the Matt Jones motor and seeing success. I needed a simple task <laughs> to help me get my foot in the door. It is becoming so clear. This UFO video is a must, take the time to read and go over the material in it. Otherwise you miss the starting gun firing and you will not understand much of the other videos. I see now that these concepts are all over the standard COP of .25 so it should be easy to go OU. The magic spell of lies, deceit and malice are melting away like butter. UFO is willing to take it on the chin I see. HTTPS slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch v equal mj4 rv0 oe q Commutator RNI Originally posted by Yaz Zyro View Post. Hello UFO. Can you post a step-by-step -step tutorial in which we can see how you remove the old commutator, how you mount the second one and how you align them? The list of tools needed is very appreciated for those who are beginners in this area and want to make a prototype. I tried to remove the commutator and I break it immediately. Thanks a lot. Jay. Hello Jay. There are several posts on this thread dedicated to COMM removal and reinstallation. Basically the main issue here is that you cannot push commutator outwards by pressing on any of its outer elements base area, bottom, if you do it so. It will create an uneven force and will definitively break it. You must reach its center bottom ring right next to shaft to make an even push out of armature, and so depending on the size, you could use one of the Y-type crow bars. Normally this type of y crow bars are used in automotive to remove plastic clips off door panels or any other fastener which have a flat head so, again, depending on your COMM shaft diameter size. You will need that specific size tool. And so, you will need two of them, one just to be used as the base and the other to eject commutator from bottom ring base, resting on the first one. It is even this way a very careful operation, since commutators are made of bakelite which is very brittle. Sometimes you must remove, cut off, the windings in order to allow full access to the bottom COMM ring. Regards and good luck. UFO politics. My old balder. Well retired now and a little more time to do things. I have a Balder Industrial DC Dual Brush 20 Pole Motor I have been working on and now finished. The commutator design featured reusable spade connectors, whose photos I have posted previously on the thread. Boy did they come in handy as I had to rewire the motor several times. I could not fit enough wire by just lowering it a gauge or two from the original 19GA size to get 10HM of copper wire on it. I calculated the area of the pole gap and the area of the wire plus gaps between round wires. But ended up having to apply a 2.0 correction factor to double the amount of wasted space in a wound coil. I looked into first a quad filer, 
the A5 filer to a GA wire to give me the same surface area of the original 19 gauge wire, hoping for more current carrying capacity. As I wounded it looked like it was not going to fill the rotor sufficiently by coil 6. I test wound 24 gauge wire hoping to do a bi filer, but I lost the results. Later I perfected a spreadsheet to calculate how many strands of wire were going to be used. If I hadn't lost my test result I would have seen I couldn't get enough wire in again. I got to coil 10 and I could then see it wasn't gonna fit again. So tired of making multi-filer wire, and having a better estimate of wasted space, I thought 23 gauge would fit, single strand. But again got to coil 10 and thought it wouldn't fit. So then I did the next 6 coils with my old 5 filer 2 a GA wire that I saved. At coil 16 it siddle didn't look good and changed to single strand 24 gauge and managed to finish. I always wound in pairs of coils, first coil 1 then coil 11 balancing it with the same wire and wire lay on the coils. Here is my coil winding worksheet and a picture of the rotor. I explored adding an additional brush set to try to tap the coil disconnect BEMF spark energy, red and green wires, but they did not work and just dragged some EMF energy out of the system instead. I should probably play with the timing as it is assembled to run in the normal mode. So pretty much as usual with UFO ASIM motors looks to perform astoundingly better than standard Edison style motors. I have a standard Balder motor of the same type and hooked them all up and tested both and here is my first results, using 24 volts. Standard Balder RPM 400. ASIM Balder RPM 1400. Now my Balder I built it to have a 1.1 ohm resistance per coil, instead of the standard 1.0 recommended by UFO, as I was worried about how hot some of my motors were in the past. But I have checked on the motor magnets, and they seem to hold their magnetism until 400 deg Celsius. Or around 700 deg F. So it seems standard magnets will hold and it is no big deal for motors to run at hot to the touch temps, with good wiring and bearings. Last edited by Sampaho, March 12, 2018, 5.56 AM. Up, up and away. Originally posted by Sampaho View Post. I had gotten my hands on another 12V battery when my car needed a new one and got some of my UPS batteries together too. So I have run some more tests on my Balder up to 48V. I thought I would post the data. Balder ASIM performance data and comparison to OE asterisk. Test date voltage Balder ASIM RPM OE RPM. July 7th, 1848, 30, 50, 1200. Asterisk Balder SM data for both brush sets powered. I am getting almost triple the performance from the OE motor. Built around a 1-1 ohm winding, I am sure the amperage consumption is better than the normal SM motor here, as for instance, UFO's Imperial. There is a Balder office in the Philadelphia area near me. I would love to show this to someone, there. I remember how UFO's Imperial motor did around 3400 RPM on 48V, but mine is only a dual brush set, while his is a quad. Sampaho. Great to see you around old friend and kicking. Best regards. UFO politics. A750 West machine run by 2AA batteries. The machine was modified, rewounded and constructed based on a disregarded, by actual science, method of open. Asymmetrical systems conceived all the way back in the 1800s and fully developed by Nikola Tesla. Therefore, it is impossible, based on a closed system, that activates simultaneously, all the looped, closed coils within its rotor armature. To believe those two tiny batteries could even move that 4.39 LVS machine rotor shaft, plus all magnetic drag generated between rotor core and stators. Adding all mechanical friction involved, bearings. 
brushes, then it will be much less conceivable to run it for over 25, 25 minutes at steady over 350 revolutions per minute, RPM, without suffering any decay. Just because it is an achievement, an operation, those two little batteries could never fulfill. Those two small capacity A batteries are engineered according to our dogmatic science chosen model to run, a much but much smaller little motor and only for around 15, 15 minutes maximum. However, if I would be to engineer an open system, where only the actuating interacting coils that create motoring propulsion would be turned on, one at a time, and just for a few nanoseconds. And so on, a succession of other independent coils in a sequence. Everyone at specific timings each with low resistance values then it would be possible within the same exact machine to obtain the results seen on this video. It is not science fiction, it is not a hoax we all have been blinded following one single possibility for too many years, and from generation to generation. It is about time to become divergent from those obsolete models, and open our eyes and minds to develop this other hidden side of knowledge. For conventional science, that have been feeding us all for the past 130 plus years, this type of motor could only be moved, conceived to work with only the right engineered battery. Like deep cycle 12B, 35AH lead acid batteries. So, it would be completely irrational, or mentally insane, to even think this 2A1, 2B, 22AD mag, NI Marshall Islands batteries will even move those 5 pounds rotor shaft, right? Therefore, I would be considered a seriously ill, mentally insane person, if I tell you that those two little batteries down there, would be running that motor for the next boring, tedious. Over 25 minutes. 22 AD mag equal to, 28 A. I equal, 2, 28 A, slash, 0, 5 H, 30 minutes, equal 4, 56 amps. SKA PKL, you definitely lost a lot of your credibility here, this motor doesn't do any work, you could stop the rotor from spinning with your dick and it won't even hurt. I don't see any 750 watt work here at all. Ufo politics, at SK8 PKL, I would not use mine trying to stop it, just because I know exactly how it works, but just imagine it would be yours. Dick. Sorry stick got jammed, still will keep going. Any pain yet SKA PKL? Sure want me to keep going. Poor stick. It won't be good anymore. SKA PKL, your video answer is absolutely stupid and worth nothing you changed the power supply. Where are those two A batteries from your last video? Of course this looks a bit more like 750 watt work, but still, you changed something to it so it looks a lot more like it anyways good try. Ufo politics, I never said the 2AA little batteries would output 750 WATTS. Title on video is, A 750 W motor ran by 2AA batteries. No more no less, they did run it right that was the point. The 2AA battery test is just a proof of concept, Try same batteries on any original, off-the-shelf 750W motor, or even less wattage, and see what it does then come back and post results. Original motor specs are nominal voltage of 24 volts and nominal current of 40 amps. Mr. Summitville, so, I watched your first video where you claimed over unity because you measured 20 volts on the motor when inputting only 7.3 volts. I told you then that was not over unity. Strike one. Then you tell me to watch this video. Well, there is no over unity here either. Strike two. Do you even know what over unity is? Ufo politics, at Mr. Summitville I do perfectly know what OU is I also know that voltage means nothing without amperage, resulting in watts, VXI. I never claimed over unity sir, 
I said motor is increasing voltage output while still outputting high torque speed. In this case over unity is not only about V plus I equal watts, but also the power that machine is generating, which is torque and speed, RPMs, or are you disregarding such parameters? You cited a DC-DC converter, which is a simple concept of buck boost through inductors. Diodes and capacitors but will never output a mechanical power that I know of still waiting for your answer Mr. Summit build 20 volts out. 7.3 inch plus enormous amount of torque plus high RPMs all together in one package. Don't they add up to output sir? Or don't you measure a motor's output based on its mechanical performance as is torque plus speed equal power? At UFO Politics High UFO, have you tried outputting this motor into a battery while it runs, using a buck converter to run loop back to the feed from the same batteries you charge with the output points? If so, will it run for a long time? If so, will the motor continue to run and not shut off or will it shut down after some time? I'd like to see what type of output amperage the charge portion of the asymmetric motor is capable of. Nobody online seems to try this in a video and I think it is necessary to see if this will work, or if it will eliminate the additional amperage used to drive the motor compared to a symmetrical motor. I have seen the asymmetrical motor not gaining input amperage while the motor is under massive load, but the charge terminal's voltage rises massively. My question is this does the output wattage rise as well? We could figure this out by taking the voltage and multiplying it times the amperage of the output, and the same with the input. I'd like to see the voltage and the amperage of the output under load so we could determine the output wattage. Then the input amperage and voltage so we could see the input power and compare to the output. This will give a lot more insight as to what the motor is doing to see if it has special function other than the feed not gaining amperage with a load on it, which is incredible so far. I feel that the output would stay the same as the input, meaning if you drove for instance 1 amp at 1 volt into the input and the output was 10 volts. The output should be spitting out 0.1 amp at 10 volts, correct? If this is under load, I am seeing most of these motors with 1 volt and 1 amp of input is spitting out 20 volts. The amperage I am guessing would be 0.05 amps at 20 volts if my calculations are correct, right? If this is true, then it means that the output is exactly the same as the input and we would get free rotation with a very powerful torque as a result of building this motor meaning the motor is running for completely free provided we build a circuit to reduce the 20 volts back to the input voltage and loop the motor, which could very easily be done with a buck converter. If this is true, we could run a generator from the shaft of this motor and gain power out completely free because the battery would still charge from the output of the motor while rotation is happening at a very high RPM with a ton of torque. The video above is a simple proof of wrong concepts we all have learned in our electric engineer universities, or even in lower level technical schools if we are based on that rigid locked in time model, adopted and considered the one and only for over 130 years by our dogmatic sciences, bought out slash financed by families which institutions are based mainly on oil investments capitals cardinals. Then, the model above breaks all rules established by those twisted and closed systems concepts acquired for too long by now based on those old, dark, locked concepts. This video then tends to become unbelievable or merely be classified within the impossible to be a rated category within the science fiction or could even be accused of being a hoax. A fraud made under some special effects software, or some kind of tricks. But it is not any of the above it is completely real. The machine was modified, rewounded and constructed based on a disregarded, by actual science, method of open. Asymmetrical systems conceived all the way back in the 1800s and fully developed by Nikola Tesla. Therefore, it is impossible, based on a closed system, that activates simultaneously, all the looped, closed coils within its rotor armature.
to believe those two tiny batteries could even move that 4.39 LBS machine rotor shaft, plus all magnetic drag generated between rotor core and stators. Adding all mechanical friction involved, bearings, brushes, then it will be much less conceivable to run it for over 25, 25 minutes at steady over 350 revolutions per minute, RPM, without suffering any decay. Just because it is an achievement, an operation, those two little batteries could never fulfill. Those two small capacity A batteries are engineered according to our dogmatic science chosen model to run, a much. But much smaller little motor and only for around 15, 15 minutes maximum. However, if I would be to engineer an open system, where only the actuating interacting coils that create motoring propulsion would be turned on, one at a time, and just for a few nanoseconds. <laughs> and so on, a succession of other independent coils in a sequence. Everyone at specific timings each with low resistance values then it would be possible within the same exact machine to obtain the results seen on this video. It is not science fiction. It is not a hoax we all have been blinded following one single possibility for too many years, and from generation to generation. It is about time to become divergent from those obsolete models, and open our eyes and minds to develop this other hidden side of knowledge. Dirk Blick, I am sure your video is not meant as a hoax but it is meaningless. You just assume there is enormous mechanical output power. Why don't you apply a mechanical load near 750 watt? Since this is the load this motor was constructed for. And then compare it to your electrical input power 2A batteries won't be sufficient in this case. Such a measurement would give you the efficiency of your construction and I bet your efficiency will not be better than those of the original motor. Electrical engineers are not so dumb as you think. Politics, at Dirk Blick like I wrote above, this is just a proof of concept, I know perfectly well there is not enough mechanical output power but it ran simply because it is an open system. If it would have been a closed system it would have never run for that long, if it was to ever move that shaft with the same batteries. Dirk Blick, at UFO Politics with open system you imply, that some unexpected form of energy is streaming into the system. You probably can't tell what this mysterious energy could be and why it is sneaking in due to your adaptions. But you are sure this happens because it runs so long? You are wrong. Measure the mechanical output power and you will find that it is less than the electrical input power. Should not be too difficult. Make a thin shaft winding up a string and lift this way some load for some hit in a certain time. If you can't bring RPM down enough by a heavy load you will have to use a little belt transmission. Do this and if you measure and calculate correctly you will find there is no unknown energy involved. UFO politics, at Dirk Blick open system means exactly that, independent circuit of coils, turning on then off, yes, an unexpected reversed energy kicks in, some call it lens effect, others BEMF. Others radiant energy the point is that every coil whenever it is suddenly cut off its energy feed, it generates a reactive energy a reverse spike seen in a scope now. If this coil is facing another magnetic field well, then other reactions develop, depending on the polarization type. I have measured the mechanical power and compare it with OEM symmetry the difference is very interesting. Have you ever tried it if not I would do it, then reply again. I have mounted this motor where it belongs after modification a scooter and was much faster and lasted much longer running time than OEM you have no idea what happens when its output energy is collected in super caps. Regards. Dirk Blick, at UFO Politics you don't seem to be very knowledgeable in electrical engineering. When you turn a coil on, electric energy is spent to build up the magnetic field. When you turn the coil off, the magnetic field collapses and this energy is returned. You don't get anything by BEMF, 
which you haven't invested before. And I don't try such things. Such experiments were done 150 years ago, it is not necessary to repeat them. And I know exactly what happens when energy is stored in super caps. It stays there stored. That's all. Yifo politics, at dirt blip that is your opinion, on my end, mine is that you are not very knowledgeable about magnetic fields. The energy is spent to build a magnetic field energy to coil is cut, field collapses, if the energy was spent in building that field. Why does any energy returns except for a very small remnant within the circuit path? But nope, that energy is higher than what we spent why? Unfortunately you are looking only to the electricity running to copper wires and ending not looking at a magnetic field that is out in space, interacting with the medium around it. Experimenting never ends in the minds of scientists no matter how many years ago it was done maybe there were missing something, could be. Just a quick question have you seen the rest of all my work? Dirk Blick, at UFO Politics not knowledgeable? Have you ever heard that there was this guy Maxwell? who gave us equations, which cover all electromagnetic effects, including coils of course. His equations and the derived formulas from these equations are used every day and they always prove to be right. A coil is characterized primarily by its resistance R and inductance L. For voltage U and current I you have the formula U equal RI plus L, DDT, and energy is of course the integral of UI over time. If you use this you will find that whenever a coil is switched on with a final current I, an energy of 0, 5 Li asterisk I is spent to build the magnetic field. Once it is built, no more energy goes in the field. And in whatever way you let the field collapse you get this energy back. I don't know of any energy which is higher than what we spent. Your sentence why does any energy returns except for a very small remnant within the circuit path is not clear to me. Just as no one doubts the law of the lever no scientist doubts Maxwell's laws. That's why no experiments are made anymore to see if they are correct. But experimenting still goes on in that way, that these formulas are used by scientists and technicians every day. Also there is conservation of energy. Where do you think your excess energy stems from? Ufo politics, at Dirk Blick I am very aware of James Clerk Maxwell sir as well as Oliver Heaviside who contributed to the Curl Calculus, French scientist Poincaré and finally Heinrich Lorenz. Who vectorized and tensed all Maxwell equations that were based on high level algebra, replacing them by 2D vectors and tensors. Maxwell equations were and are perfect. You are right they are based on integrals which is a way to calculate 3D geometry surfaces where do I think the excess energy comes from. What we all have been doing so far in order to generate energy is to stir and align the ether, the medium, the vacuum into spirals over time space. Which influence is transmitted to our diamagnetic copper circuits, coils, through magnetic field spatial spiraling which is the real dynamic spectrum. Related to our very old concepts about imaging the magnetic field spectrum, based on iron particles over paper is the completely wrong view, wrong testing, wrong principles. These old methods imply a 2D field which is wrong, there are no imaginary lines of force. Those are just magnetic bridges of the iron particles being magnetized into NS 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 chains the real M spectrum are curled dynamic spirals interacting with our medium and with all magnetic reactive materials over time. This real spectrum could only be seen through polarized light and magnetic sensitive compounds so, if we get a second parameter, the space displacement then we complete the operation formula of exciting the energy in our ether. We have built a gradient wave that pushes like a pump, the flow outside the circuit, S. Your conclusions calculations based on those parameters related to a closed coil being fed are perfect but what happens when that M field collapses it generates a reverse voltage right? I know. What your answer would be, I heard it a million times, the circuit tries to keep current, I, constant, 
and to do that it reverses voltage, V. Really? So the circuit has some kind of AI, artificial intelligence, maybe of even a high IQ law that is a pathetic answer. But the worst part is that we all have swallowed it lol, laughing about our own ignorance. Due to submissive and blind acceptance nature, fortunately I don't have much of those natural attributes. D the reality and right answer is another one, and has to do with magnetic spatial curled spiraling into the medium when it ceases. The unscrewing effect turns on influencing a reverse flow within circuit. If we do a constant PWM, square wave, then the effect will be more alive. Revealing much stronger actually this is the foundation of switched power sourcing like the SEPIC or the buck boost converters but I know you would not accept that no matter how much I spend. My time writing here. Unfortunately that is human nature, however, if I show you a working model based on this so far either theories then I hope you will give up on the old concepts. That is my hope. Dirk Blick, at UFO Politics but what happens when that M field collapses? It generates a reverse voltage right? I know what your answer would be, I heard it a million times, the circuit tries to keep current, I constant, and to do that it reverses voltage, V, this is the answer of kindergarten, not my one. The correct answer, when the M field collapses, equal decreases, the change of the M field causes an E field, due to the rot E and dV slash dT term in Maxwell's equations. And this E field causes the reverse voltage in the coil. For a coil you can simply hold on to the term U equal L asterisk, d dT, which can be derived from Maxwell. A decrease of current causes a negative U. This explanation is straightforward and does not need magnetic spatial curled spiraling and ether. I think you should have more trust in the equations of old Maxwell. They are quite old by now but they are not old concepts, they are valid. Unfortunately, they leave no room for any energy output which was not put in before. UFO politics, at Dirk Blick it is the same explanation as I mentioned before, except yours is backed up by equation parameters. Now there was an E field while coil was on, so the magnetic field collapse does not cause an E field, it just reverses its vector direction. Current, I, stays positive while circuit is closed, when it is opened it decreases, reversing V. But all this is related to materials mass actions reactions within a physical circuit, however. All of it is produced due to a spatial magnetic field, spiraling into the ether, polarizing all particles around it. You could build a specific coil where both B fields would be cancelling each other's, by opposing CW and CCW turns within, so no magnetic field would be generated. Then absolutely nothing would occur no positive, nor reverse flow conclusions here? Magnetic field is the main cause of all this readings. Without it nothing takes place. You cite Maxwell a lot, and Maxwell was the first one to talk about a curl dynamic particle displacement within all materials, copper wires and iron core, as well as in the field itself. I have that Maxwell book, and could cite any time his own words. In my conclusion there is more about electromagnetic phenomena besides the material. Physical math on specific components it is the virtual field geometries and structuring that has to be studied more than it has been so far. And then maybe we would be able to explain some magnetic reactions which has no math explanation so far. Resuming here, you are not going to change give up your point of view, and so, I am not going to either, so there is no point on keeping this conversation. When I upload my next video, then you are very welcome to come and render your opinions there. Respectfully UFO Politics. Dirk Blick, at UFO Politics you don't want to prolong the discussion, since neither you or me will change the point of view. I am not as stubborn. Give me an example of a magnetic application which is not explained by Maxwell and I will change sides. But this would be a great surprise, 
since you would expect that science has noted such exceptions long time ago. Up to now you haven't given me any such example. There was an E field while coil was on this field component stems from the voltage source applied to the coil. It is independent of the E field caused by the change of M field. E field before and after have a different size, it's not a reversal. Also think of a superconductive coil with zero resistance. Then you have a current and magnetism without any E field at all. If you move a magnet past a coil the change of the M field generates an E field, there wasn't any before. In all these cases formulas work perfect. Also in the case of the bifiler coil with M fields cancelling out. No resultant M field means no change of M field and no E field is generated. Such a coil behaves just like a resistor. At Ufopolitics I am totally agree Mr. Ufopolitics. Electrical engineers follow the deception of business-minded investor to manipulate the so-called electricity. I am follower of Nikola Tesla using radiant and RF energy and no more paying tons of electric bills. Now I am doing my research and experiments like you. The point on this video is very simple, this 2A batteries add less than 3V, actually 2.54 volts, that motor in a symmetrical winding type will not even move its shaft, period. Why because symmetry requires a full energizing of all coils within rotor while asymmetry only requires the specific coils at interactions while others are disconnected. That means only two circuits will be on, out of 20 total, 20 poles rotor, it is very obvious that the more V we add. The higher the performance as I demonstrated in other video, 750 WATTS motor test 2. This motor could work with up to 36 to 48 V+. In that second video is only 11.5 V. You make your own conclusions out of this two videos. At UFO Politics Hello UFO, this video of yours is one of the great tributes to the advantages of asymmetric motor technology. Good luck. See you soon on the My Asymmetric Electrodynamic Machines Thread Light. <laughs> Turbo Blitz, what is the DC current being drawn by the motor in the video? UFO Politics, it don't matter just try same experiment with any similar motor but the ones you could buy anywhere then see if it does same thing this is the main point of this video simple. Original motor amp draw was 40 amps at 24 V and 3300 RPMs now it does 4800 RPMs at 24 volts and 3.5 amps draw. The video above is a simple proof of wrong concepts we all have learned in our electric engineer universities or even in lower level technical schools if we are based on that rigid. Locked in time model, adopted and considered the one and only for over 130 years by our dogmatic sciences, bought out slash financed, by families which institutions are based mainly. On oil investments capitals cardinals. Then, the model above breaks all rules established by those twisted and closed systems concepts acquired for too long by now based on those old, dark, locked concepts. This video then tends to become unbelievable or merely be classified within the impossible to be a rated category within the science fiction or could even be accused of being a hoax. A fraud made under some special effects software, or some kind of tricks. But it is not any of the above it is completely real. The machine was modified, rewounded and constructed based on a disregarded, by actual science, method of open. Asymmetrical systems conceived all the way back in the 1800s and fully developed by Nikola Tesla. Therefore, it is impossible, based on a closed system, that activates simultaneously, all the looped, closed coils within its rotor armature. To believe those two tiny batteries could even move that 4.39 LBS machine rotor shaft, plus all magnetic drag generated between rotor core and stators. Adding all mechanical friction involved, bearings, brushes, then it will be much less conceivable to run it for over 25, 25 minutes at steady over 350 revolutions per minute, RPM, without suffering any decay. 
just because it is an achievement, an operation, those two little batteries could never fulfill. Those two small capacity A batteries are engineered according to our dogmatic science chosen model to run, a much, but much smaller little motor and only for around 15, 15 minutes maximum. However, if I would be to engineer an open system, where only the actuating interacting coils that create motoring propulsion would be turned on, one at a time, and just for a few nanoseconds, and so on, a succession of other independent coils in a sequence. Everyone at specific timings each with low resistance values then it would be possible within the same exact machine to obtain the results seen on this video. It is not science fiction, it is not a hoax we all have been blinded following one single possibility for too many years, and from generation to generation. It is about time to become divergent from those obsolete models, and open our eyes and minds to develop this other hidden side of knowledge.